be a part of this conversation. Um, I'm really excited to talk to you about the experience we're going to have on the flight and the work we're going to do. We are going to be doing lots and lots of work and the challenge itself. And so I'm going to kind of give you some background on that and kind of walk you through that in little bits and pieces. Um, the first thing I have to say is that at least as far as we know, this is the first time there's been an innovation workshop challenge that's happened at 30,000 feet. Um, and we actually think that might be to our benefit. If you think about it, there's a couple things that always stop innovation challenges from being great, which is tweeting, texting, emailing, things like that. So guess what? We can't do that on this flight. So there's no way to actually do any of that. And you can't leave. So that's a really great thing. So we're all going to be there. We're all going to be working together. So get ready for that. Um, and the second thing that we think really sets this up to be a tremendous innovation challenge with real possibilities of getting great things out there is actually in this room. And if you look around, um, and as I've been seeing people come in, I get more and more excited. It feels like we have a tremendous wealth of talent with a tremendous kind of insight both into the challenge at hand and to the world that we're engaging with. And I feel like we can't help but get something great out of this group of people when we're together. That said, it's still challenging. Um, we had so many ideas about what we're going to do with this plane, not much of which you can do. So the reality <laughs> is, <laughs> yeah. So even putting post-its like on the on the um, uh, the bulkheads can be a little rough at certain times. We've had great kinds of uh, trials and lots of prototypes. Um, so as that is, we've had to kind of break down our innovation methodology to the one thing that we know is really core to any great challenge like that, and that is making sure that we have groups that can really collaborate together in really interesting ways. And so the one thing we have been able to do is basically make this plane into a team space. And so those of you who are kind of wearing your tags will be working on teams in team areas engaged primarily on certain aspects of the topic, the STEM challenge topic that we're going to be engaging with today. So it's that, by the way, is tough, because it's not just we want to get enough places where people can actually really engage <coughs> and do creative work, but also we want to make sure that everybody had an amazing seat. And so making that happen meant tremendous amount of labor. So this looks easy. It was hard to do. Um, so with that, I'm going to talk a little bit about the challenge as we kind of place it out. And Simon, I think you sort of did a great introduction, which is that there's a tremendous group of people, um, the UN, local Silicon Valley leaders, your advisory board, who gave real thought to what the appropriate challenge was to take on for a session like this. And I think that the way that it kind of came forward was really we do know there's a kind of gap right now um, in STEM employees versus actually where there's potential for employment. And the question is, how can we begin to kind of plug that gap? Or what are new ways to think about getting people who are deeply embedded and, new and knowledgeable in, in science, technology, engineering, and math into the jobs that actually can be really beneficial to all of us? Um, to do that, in a typical IEO way, we actually went out and spent time talking to tons and tons of experts, getting as much insight as possible. We spoke to people in Bangladesh and in Africa, as well as people here people who are educators, researchers, who have a lot of thinking on this topic, to begin to get a sense of how might we hone this to a really tight brief to work from. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just show a really brief piece of um, a video that kind of gives a little introduction. For those of you who are interested in seeing more, there um, is an iPad app that has pretty much all the, um, the articles, all the interviews that we've done. You can actually peruse at your leisure. And for the people on the plane, we really want you to peruse. Like, mm -hmm. not at your leisure. Just do it. You're going to get the work done. <laughs> um, but here's a quick little intro. session. And so what we've done is we've actually, through the work that we've done with the experts that we chatted with, we actually built four smaller briefs. That's what, that's what we'll be working with in teams while we're on the plane. Um, just to run through them really quickly, there will be one team that will be focusing on fostering women in STEM. This is one of the number one issues that came up, is how are we engaging women and little girls into um, STEM education and actually um, and, and STEM employment opportunities, and how might we do that? So there'll be a whole team um, who will be focusing on that topic. Another topic will be focusing on not so much how are we taking STEM trained people and moving them to jobs, but how do we actually foster and build jobs where they are? How do we actually build new emerging economies um, where there are emerging economies, economies happening? And I think that's a pretty exciting challenge for many of us to begin thinking about. And there's some tremendous examples out there of how this is happening. Um, Expanding STEM, this is an interesting one, but um, as successful as STEM can make you in the work that you do, there are a lot of other skills that do tremendous, kind of have tremendous value. Often those are things that are soft skills, leadership skills, ability to be creative and think outside of the context that you're in. So there'll be a whole group that's focusing on how might we expand the notion of STEM? What else can we bring into play that helps us make sure that we have the right leaders for tomorrow's um, uh, opportunities? 
And then lastly, and this is kind of where our mind all went to in the beginning, is how then do we actually build up the kind of global pipeline of talent, and how can we actually help our kind of um, gap that we're seeing here and fill that with um, a global pipeline that's out there. And so there'll be a group that'll be thinking about that specifically. Um, it'll happen in three parts. Um, and as you know, we're kind of we're pretty, we're uh, crazy for process, but we'll start with understand, ideate, and make. Understand is already starting to happen. Right as we go into the panel, we'll begin to learn about the context of the problem. We've already done work around that. And right after that, during lunch, we'll be kind of beginning to talk about what we, as a group in this room, know about these topics and how we can begin to solve for it. The second piece is ideate. Um, and we believe that when you get diverse thinkers together and collaborate together around how you can begin to solve problems, you get better solutions. So we'll be doing brainstorming. That also will be happening here in the hotel and then a little bit on the plane as well. But the plane is ironically going to be where we do most of the making. A lot of the work, the kind of real kind of breaking down, getting into real ideas, when possible prototyping, if possible coding, those kinds of things will be happening on the plane. So when, I, when we say get ready to kind of do work, that's where it's going to be happening for the most part. I want to end by just kind of hitting a couple things that I want to make sure that we all know about um, this challenge and what we've kind of um, decided to agree upon doing in the next 12, 24 hours. Um, there is no silver bullet. In fact, we believe we're going to be better off if we think about many solutions to attack this problem, not one solution. And so what we believe is we want to get as many ideas onto the table as we possibly can over this next period and use those to kind of ladder up to solving the problem, not thinking about kind of like what's the one thing we can do that could fix this. This is the thing that made us the most nervous, is policy makes this really hard. Um, and it's very easy to imagine that we get on a plane and we talk about the kind of downfalls of policy for most of the flight and we come off with virtually nothing except for a lot of frustration. One of the things we actually believe at IDEO is that some of the best ways to challenge them to, to solve problems innovatively is to actually duck around the problem, um, to work around the problem. And when you see amazing solutions, it's often places where people have said, hey, we can't go straight forward, but if we take one side step, we might be able to think about it. We are asking you to put aside your kind of inclination to go right at some of the things that are actually most critical, some of the policy questions, and say, if we had to work around this, how could we? And so that'll be challenging, but I think that'll be exciting. Um, and then basically, we want things to happen after this. We would like things to imagine that we could actually do within the kind of next six months from this. We'd like small collaborations, and we think small collaborations, <laughs> small groups of people, maybe they'll do things that are effective and actionable in the market way better than if we all decided to do it as a group. So that's one of the things we're going to be really aiming for as well. So that's what we know. What we believe is that the work's already started. Just getting these, this group of people together in a sustained conversation is going to lead to amazing things. We're really excited to be a part of it, and we thank you for having us to the piece of this. And so we think that we're already kind of one step there. Um, and then lastly, this should really be fun. If it's not <laughs> fun, if it's not fun, it's really not worth it. The more fun we have, though, the more we're going to get better ideas, frankly. It's like, <clears throat> be wild. Be crazy, don't get too drunk, but we really want you to kind of really focus on, um, I had to say that, just to make sure that it's like, but we really want to focus on getting great ideas, and that means stepping outside of our comfort zone and being a little more extreme in the way we think about things. So with that, I'm going to pass it back to Simon.